up guys so in this video I decided to uh, do a program which was given to us in the final paper of programming this program was about uh, copying an array in the reverse order in a second array and then displaying that second array as an output <coughs> excuse me so in this video uh, I decided to do that on my laptop instead of doing it on a piece of paper because it's more precise and accurate if I do this on the laptop because you have the perfect IDE and uh, you are able to see the compilation of the program and you're able to see the result on the screen as well so uh, we are going to do that so uh, as I said I am going to do the program I'm going to uh, do so you can uh, you know follow along or whatever you want to do so um, uh, let's start so uh, first you know we um, as we do in every C++ program we uh, created a file uh, the, we created the file which is named as a array for the video because I'm doing it for the video and uh, to start the program uh, I have written here hash include which is the uh, preprocessor directive uh, you know the compilation starts from here the uh, preprocessor directive then I have written the name of the file iostream so what that file does is uh, I, I've also explained this all of this uh, basics of C++ on my tutorials or on my previous video so you guys can go and check that, that out as well so here I'm not going to go that deep into these basic topics I'm just going to start my program so uh, here I'm what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to write hash include uh, I'm uh, sorry I'm uh, I've already so I'm using a Mac so I don't have to write hash include conio.h uh, I just uh, start from uh, using namespace std and the reason you use it is because uh, throughout the program then you don't have to write the std std uh, all the time you can just write the c out c in and l as they are so std so now we are making a program which uh, should prompt the user to enter uh, five integers into an array then what we are supposed to do is to copy that array in a reverse order in another array means for example our first array is array one and our second array is array two and then we are supposed to display that second array as an output so let's get started so first let me declare our first array so for example i name it array one and uh, this is and uh, you know we have in the question in the in the paper we were supposed to enter uh, five integers so you know the uh, counting of the array or you know the components the counting of the components starts for, always starts from zero so what we are going to do is we are going to declare an array of component or of length so this is called right here this is called the length of an array and this is going to be equal to four so zero one two three four makes five now we are going to declare our second array that is array 2 array 2 and that is also going to be 4 because these two arrays uh, are going to be of same length and we just have to copy our first array into our second array now uh, what we are going to do is you know uh, we were supposed to uh, prompt the user to input five integers into e into each component of the array so for uh, let's uh, prompt the user by writing c out and we are going to say that uh, please you know you have to be respectable when it comes to prompting the user so please enter five integers or five numbers whatever you want to say, uh, call it and uh, I'm going to end L to move the cursor to the next line now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use for loop and I'm going to initialize int i you know so it's going to have a local scope inside the for loop int i equals zero I'm going to start I I'm going to explain it in a bit I'm going to say if i is less than or equal to four and then sh I should be incremented by one here so what I have done uh, are so c in c in array one i so what I've done here I've prompted the user to enter five integers then I've used a for loop in which I have initialized i equals zero so i is going to be zero and uh, you know the uh, 
uh, I have uh, I have written the condition where I should be less than and equal to four, and then this uh, statement inside the for loop is going to be executed, and the statement is uh, c in array i. So whenever this statement is going to execute inside the for loop, the value of i is going to be the value of i uh, from which uh, at which the loop is executing means for example if uh, the if the loop is executing the first time if the statements are executing the first time the value of i is going to be zero so c in array i that is going to be zero remember we can also use a use a variable instead of uh, the uh, the index number of the array so this is called the index number this right here four is called the index number and uh, this bracket is called the array uh, i think array something or something operator I, I, I just forgot the name <laughs> so uh, here uh, so and then I is going to be incremented and then again I is going to be one so we have we see the user is going to input C in array uh, one uh, and I is going to be one so the user will input the second value in the same way uh, until I is uh, less than or equal to four so when I will be four array C in array one four so the user will input the f uh, the fifth component of the array and then is it, this loop is going to be exited or the, the, the compiler is going to exit the loop now uh, we uh, so first we do uh, c out and l to you know move the cursor to the next line because we don't want to be uh, our output to be outputted like in a messed up uh, you know uh, format so we are going to move the cursor to the next line now what we are going to do is initialize j equals j equals one or uh, sorry j equals zero i'm going to explain it in a bit all right, now what we are going to do is again uh, use a for loop is again use a for loop and we are going to write the uh, we are going to no no or j equals 4 so we are going, going to exactly write the same condition so I'm just going to I'm just going to be a smart person and copy it from here so because I don't want to write it again and again so right here it'll just like that so here is going to be the same condition uh, and what I want to do is I want to store every element so array 2 uh, j so uh, uh, okay I'm going to explain in a bit what I'm doing right here so array 2 j equals array <coughs> 1 array 2 j equals array 1 i and then I'm going to increment j, uh, and I'm, then I'm going to, to decrement j uh, by sorry by one. All right. So what's going to happen here? I've initialized j equals four because I want to store my array one in a reverse order in array two. That is why I've initialized uh, j equals four. The condition of the loop and the st uh, the loop statements are the same, but uh, the only difference is here. Uh, what I'm doing is I am for every execution of the loop I am storing the value the array 2 J which is going to be the opposite of I means as J decreases uh, I increases so that that so that is how uh, the array 1 is going to be stored in a reverse order in error 2 so for example in the first execution of this for loop uh, the control comes here array 2 J which is 4 equals array 1 and i is going to be 0 so in uh, in the fifth component of the array 2 uh, the component of the array 1 the first component of the array 1 is going to be stored and then j is going to be decremented which means j is going to be 3 and then again i is going to be 1 and j is going to be 3 so like that you know as uh, j is decreasing i is increasing <coughs> excuse me so that is how the array one is going to be stored in a reverse order in array two now what we are going what we want to do is to show is to exit is to output the array uh, two uh, to as the as the as the output of the program so uh, what we are going to do is uh, I so we are again going to initialize so we are going to use the same condition I am again going to be a, a very uh, smart person and going to copy this right here all right so i equals zero 
uh, less than or equal to 4 i plus plus and we are, what we are going to do is going to see out the every component of array 2 which we uh, uh, the array which uh, was copied uh, from array 1 but in a reverse order array 2 uh, array 2 i right so array 2 i but then we also don't want to be all the numbers in all the components to be outputted as a, like a single number so what we are going to do is going to create a, a space a character or a, a a string that consists of a single space so that way our output will be more organized and it will look uh, more clean so uh, there you have it let's uh, check this program out and let's see if it works properly so I have just uh, compiled the program and here it prompts me to enter five integers so I'm going to do so I'm going to one two three four five and there you go I've entered five integers in array one five integers got uh, the all the components of array one got copied into array two in the reverse order and then it's uh, the the reverse order of the array one it's shown through the river uh, through the error two the content all the all, all the all the uh, components of the array one was stored in the reverse order and array two is now being displayed Thank you very much guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time.